All right, so now we're going to just finish up by talking about pedigrees and a couple of other funky things that can happen. Um, so when you look at a pedigree, there's a key that you want to keep in mind. The first thing is that all the squares are going to be males, all the circles will be females, and um, if they are affected by something, they're going to be completely filled in, and if they're not affected, they'll be left blank. Now, sometimes if they're carriers, they'll be half filled in, and a carrier is going to be heterozygous, um, but it depends on the, on the pedigree. Um, so if you're having a mating pair, right, so people who are having kids, you'll have a horizontal line between them, and then you'll have a line going down to their offspring, and the offspring are going to be set out like this. So if you look here, you can see these two people had um, offspring, and here are all of their offspring. And then this offspring married offspring of these guys over here, right? So you can kind of follow it. So all the filled in ones, if you look, are little f, little f. Um, so you can see how that basically works, right? Okay. Um, now this is a little bit more involved and this actually brings up something we're going to talk about in a second called sex linked traits. Now um, this is a pedigree of the British royal family and you can see that this is showing hemophilia. So you can see um, where it's filled in are going to be hemophiliacs and then the half filled in ones are going to be carriers. Now I want you to look at this and tell me if you notice anything about the um, people who are affected by hemophilia. Hopefully you notice that it's only males, right? All the filled in ones that you see here are male. And then the females can only be carriers or they don't have it, okay? A um, couple of other funky things are going on here, like you have these guys' kids having kids with these guys' kids. That means cousins having kids, which is a little funky. Um, so yeah, the British royal family did some crazy stuff. Okay. So, this is going to be something called a sex-linked trait. And um, what that is, is that's going to be something that's carried on either the X or the Y chromosome. So in this case, hemophilia is going to be carried on the Y chromosome. So, um, remember that this is female. And this is male. Okay? So, remember that. I'm going to clear that, but remember that. So when we talk about hemophilia, this is something that is only carried on the um, X chromosome, okay? So females can have these possible setups. They can have X with a big H, X with a little H, or they can have little H, little H, okay? This one is going to be normal clotting factor. This one is going to be a carrier, but they're still normal. And this one is going to be a hemophiliac. But you can see that it's pretty hard for someone to be a hemophiliac when they're a female, right? The chances are much greater here. Now, for males, it's going to be different, okay? So males can be this, which is normal. Or they can be this, which is a hemophiliac. That's it right? So they have a 50-50 chance, whereas we have like a 1 in 3 as far as this goes, right? So you can definitely see why males are going to have it more often than females. And males also cannot be carriers. They either have it or they don't, whereas females can have any of these combinations, okay? So we can do a Punnett square with these. We can say you have a male who is normal clotting factor, and he has kids with a female who is a carrier, and we can say, what are their chances of having? Okay, so she's a carrier. So she's going to be X, big H, X, little h, right? So then you just, once again, just write what shows up in the boxes. And does it look like they can have a kid that's a hemophiliac? My answer is yes it's going to be this one right here, right? So that's a hemophiliac male. Um, they have a one in four chance of having a hemophiliac, right? They also have a one in four chance of having a female who's a carrier, is how you can look at that. So that's how you actually do the Punnett squares for that stuff. Okay, so we've talked about pedigrees, we've talked about that um, recombination. Um, we talked about that in meiosis, actually, the whole crossing over thing. That's going to be important for our genes. Um, 
Another thing is that we have um, 46 chromosomes arranged in 23 pairs, as you know at this point. 22 of them are called autosomes. That last pair is the sex chromosomes, right? So if it's not an autosome, it's a sex chromosome. And so we know that we can have XX or XY. Um, now, there can be issues that can happen um, like Down syndrome, and what happens in Down syndrome is you have an extra chromosome, so you have like an extra 21. Um, there are a couple of things that can cause that. One, it could be genetically linked, um, so it runs in families. The other is having pregnancy late in developmental years, um, and we'll talk about that more in class. Um, so we talked about sex-linked genes. That's how that hemophilia worked that we were talking about, and that's how you can do those Punnett squares. And the last little thing we're going to talk about here is X inactivation in females. So as you know, a female is XX. So they don't need both of the X chromosomes to be active the entire time. So what will happen is as development starts to happen, one of the X chromosomes will actually become inactive and fuse with the um, inside of the nuclear envelope. And so it's kind of cool because you can actually look at a slide and you can actually figure out that it is female because it has bar bodies and bar bodies is that inactive X. So here you can see one X chromosome and then there is the inactivated one that's fused with the membrane here again and then it's fused with the membrane so you know those are females and then these are males because they have the two separately. So I just thought that was kind of neat so you can see that. Okay so that's going to be genetics. Hopefully you can figure out now if you're your parents child or not or if not don't worry we'll do some of that in class because it's always a good time.